welcome back to my channel. My name is Sandy if you're new to my channel and today I am doing the growing up Asian American tag. Amy actually created this tag and came up with all the questions for this tag and now I'm answering them. I'm actually really glad that she did this tag because I've been wanting to share my experiences growing up for a while now but was never really sure how to go about it. So I'm glad she made it a little bit easier by coming up with all these questions to answer. If you want to check out her video and learn more about her experiences, I will link it down below in the description box. And with that said, I guess we can just move on to the questions. Which ethnicity are you? I am Chinese. Which generation are you? So my dad is from Shanghai, China, and my mom was born in Vietnam, but she's also Chinese, and they both immigrated to the States in their 20s from their respective countries. My mom actually lived in Hong Kong for a little bit before she came here, so I think that makes me first generation born in America. And I grew up in the Bay Area of California in the city of San Jose, area code 408, in case you were wondering. What is the first experience where you felt that demarcation of being a minority or different? I first felt different when I started going to school and I didn't know any English. It was really, really hard. I remember when we were learning the alphabet, we had a letter of the week and at that letter of the week was the letter M. A student would have to bring in an object that started with that letter and put it in a paper bag and go in front of the classroom and the other kids would have to guess what object you brought in that started with that letter and I brought in a toy that I got from McDonald's because it starts with the letter M but the toy was like an apple with a worm coming out of it um, I remember this so distinctly and no one could guess it and I thought I was like really clever for like outsmarting everyone and I pulled out the toy and everyone just looked at me with like such confusion like they were everyone was so confused and that's when I realized I messed up <laughs> I was like I didn't do this assignment right and no one thinks I'm clever I was so embarrassed and so like like oh it was the worst it was so bad obviously I'm like still so traumatized by it because I just I just I still remember it that was like one instance where I felt very different and just out of place and not really where I belonged and it's crazy because my dad knows English like he speaks English pretty well I just never learned it at home at home I only learned Cantonese and Mandarin were you always proud of your heritage or was there a time you rejected it Oh, <laughs> for sure, I rejected it. I was just so embarrassed of like not knowing English. I felt so inadequate at school that once I learned enough English, I went home and that was the only thing I would speak in. And I remember teasing my brother and sister for not knowing English, which is horrible. I feel so guilty about that. But they did get to learn a little bit of English before they went to school. <laughs> so, you know, I think in elementary school, it was a little bit more diverse. But once I got to middle school and high school, there was just a larger Asian population. And you would hear from other kids at school who weren't Asian say things like, there are so many of you Asians here. Why are there so many Asians here? Oh, that's so Asian. The way that they said it, it was in such a negative tone that it just made me not want to be that. And I just wanted to be normal. I wanted to fit in and look like everyone else. So I, I for sure rejected it for a really long time. What are some stereotypes that you struggle with? I think there are kind of two that I really struggled with and one is the stereotype that Asians, especially women, are very quiet and weak or seen as just someone you can kind of walk all over. I hate that because sometimes I am that way. Sometimes I'm afraid to speak up or say something or I just bite my tongue because it's not a big deal or something like that. And I see the way that people around me, my family or my family friends who didn't speak English that well, I could see them kind of being mistreated out in public because they couldn't speak the language. And I think it was easy for people to kind of mistreat them or communicate negatively towards them because we wouldn't say anything. And I hate that stereotype. I hate that my mannerisms sometimes perpetuate that stereotype. The second stereotype I kind of struggle with is that we're all great at math and science. Amy touched upon this in her video about being like the model minority and just that expectancy that we're all really great at math and science. And I'm not. I've never really had an interest in science whatsoever. Looking at what I'm doing now, I definitely prefer a more creative path. I think growing up, I was never expected to pursue anything creative and it kind of, it kind of sucks because it made me feel like I wasn't 
wasn't good enough to pursue something in design or art definitely hindered me from pursuing those things because I felt like it just wasn't a career path or an option because we we're supposed to be into math and science and being a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant. I tried to be interested in those career paths, but I just couldn't bring myself to do that. So I think in a way it did like hinder me from pursuing something I was actually really interested in. Can you speak your language? I can speak Cantonese and a little bit of Mandarin. My understanding in Mandarin is definitely better than what I can speak, but I didn't speak Cantonese or Mandarin for a really long time. And then as I got older, I realized like I'm gonna completely lose it if I don't start speaking it again. So I speak Cantonese with my mom's side of the family, like my grandma and my aunts. And then with my mom, I just speak to her in English or or broken English, which actually I think counts kind of as a language too. And then with my dad, I just speak English with him. So I don't practice my Mandarin so much. I used to go to Chinese school to learn Mandarin, but I quit after like three years, which I regret now for sure. And my mom loves to rub it in. How has being Asian American affected your relationship with your parents? With my dad growing up, because he could speak English, it was just much easier to communicate with him and there was better understanding. He could help me with my homework and it was just a lot easier. And with my mom, it was very difficult for sure um, because we would get into fights all the time and misunderstand each other, miscommunicate. And we would just get to a point where I would scream like, why can't you learn English? You're in America. And my mom would say like, well, why can't you learn Chinese? You're Chinese. It was just like that a lot. And I was the oldest. So my mom depended on me a lot for translating or asking questions. Like if we were at a store and she needed help translating a question she had or translating the answer, she would depend on me a lot because my dad wasn't usually there or he wouldn't go with us to run these kinds of errands. I felt a lot of pressure to have to step up. It was really difficult. I felt like I had to grow up really quickly because I had to do those things for my mom and I didn't realize that she was asking me because she was maybe like insecure about her language and she was unsure of herself and I failed to see that growing up and I think if I had seen that and known that when I was younger, I would have been more patient and understanding but because I was in my own space and trying to adapt and learn myself, I didn't see that she was also trying to learn and adapt. I think it's a struggle for them too to kind of have to immigrate here and learn an entire new culture, which I never appreciated or understood that it was hard for them as well. So growing up there for sure was a lot of tension like in my household. And even now it's like hard to communicate with my mom sometimes because I still don't know that much Cantonese. Like I can get around, but I can't have deep conversations with my mom about where she's from or where my grandparents are from. And those are things that I wish I could learn and speak to her about because soon like it might be gone and I will never get the chance to learn that. Growing up Asian American was definitely like straining on my relationship with my parents and I'm sure it was difficult for them as well because they were also growing as an Asian American. But how do you feel about your heritage now? Do you identify with it? So now I'm definitely proud of being an Asian American and that I have a culture and a history that I can look to. I definitely identify with being Asian American but specifically my own heritage of being Chinese, I'm still learning a lot about what that means and I haven't been to China before. I don't know what it's like there. I don't know what the people are like there. If I went there, I don't know that it would feel like home at all because it's not my home. It's never been my home. So I want to learn more about what it means to be Chinese and the traditions behind it, but I'm not there yet. And I think that's okay. What is your favorite thing about being Asian American slash your heritage? I don't know if this is a qualifying answer, but my favorite thing about being Asian American is just that my parents are Asian American. And I love my parents and I love that they have this culture, this history, and they're colored with all of it. Everything that I am and that I look like and everything about me that's Chinese comes from my parents and I just really value and cherish that, if that makes sense. Like obviously the food is freaking amazing. I love Chinese food now. Before I think I would deny it so much, but now I freaking love Chinese food. <laughs> it's so good. I know I still have a lot to learn when it comes to my heritage and my culture, but just recognizing that is a great starting point for me. And so, yeah, that's it for this tag. And if you're Asian American, I would love to hear about your experience below. So feel free to comment anything that you want to share. And I feel like a lot of these questions can also apply to like children of immigrants because that's also a really big part of my upbringing that I'm a child of an immigrant. Um, so if you want to answer any of these questions also, like feel free to. I definitely invite you to. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and just learning more about a different experience, I guess. 
my experience. I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye! Thank you.